Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this is North Okanagan Speed. This is where we like to drive around in supercars, have some fun, really put them to the paces, test them against other cars, go snowmobiling, dirt biking, side by siding, just all sorts of fun stuff. Today we're going to be introducing my 2009 Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4. Some of you might recognize this car as it was an old DDE car. If you know a lot about cars and car channels, you watch a lot of other channels, the Daily Driven Exotics car that I have here is Mia's old car. It is the 2009 Lamborghini Gallardo. It has the super legera carbon fiber skirt and wing, 20 inch pier wheels, just got her all cleaned up. So I want to go over some things that I love about it, some things I dislike about it, some stuff that I just find odd. It also has the FI exhaust, which didn't come with the valve. So I installed the valves on the car so that I have now a quiet mode and a loud mode. And uh, yeah, there is a wiring harness I had to get, plus the valves, plus the vacuum actuator and a vacuum tank. So I installed that all in the back. I'll show you guys that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, first of all, I wanna say this is probably one of the best supercars you can buy. It's super reliable. I've had no issues with it. I've had you know it for a few months, only put about 1500K on it, but I've had no issues whatsoever. We are gonna be looking at getting a wrap on it shortly here. Um, it is wrapped right now. Originally it was black. Now it's this Nozatech super gloss sand. It does have front end lift and down, so now that it's been lowered on springs, we can still get over most speed bumps and whatnot without scratching the carbon fiber on the front or on the sides. So with this car, you gotta be careful when driving it to put it in Sport or Corsa. That way you don't burn out the single stage clutch. It's super fun in Sport and Corsa. It's very raw to drive on like the C8, which is very comfortable, practical. This thing is raw. It throws you around, throws you in the seat. Very aggressive when you drive it. It's like driving a really fast, much larger go-kart. I have a blast in this thing. Between the C8 and the Gallardo, I'm not sure what is my favorite. Um, this one's definitely more fun to drive, I think. It feels faster, even though I think the C8 is faster. However, this thing being just so raw, it just makes it feel quicker. Um, other things neat about this car that I like is you get to learn some Italian, I guess. Here, where it shows your fuel level, it's Benzina for fuel. And coolant is aqua. I mean, water, yeah, I mean, makes makes pretty well sense there. That one's pretty straightforward. Another thing I find super weird, though, the beeping is really annoying, so I apologize in advance. It's one thing I do not like about the car. So, some things that I find odd are the windows up here, apart from being on the sides, but they go backwards. So you push forward for them to go down, you push down for them to go up. Again, I apologize about the beeping. I just wanted to show you guys that. And everything is like that. More screaming beeping. It drives me crazy. Stop yelling. So, she's got 53,000 K on it. Everything seems to be backwards, you know, with the windows, all the buttons go backwards on the nav and controlling your stereo. You think this would be your volume, it's not. This scrolls through your menu, and again, normally to go down, you go to the right. On this car, you go to the left to make it go down. Volume is still correct by going up and not down, but everything else seems to be backwards. Super weird. Nothing crazy fancy on the interiors of these cars. They do look really nice still not too dated or anything, um, but nothing overly techy either. The doors are kind of cheap feeling when it comes to the plastics. You can see mine is kind of coming off here just a little bit. It doesn't sit totally flush. But again, these cars are, I don't want to say hand-built because they're not anymore, but they're more focused on the exterior aesthetics and going fast and everything like that. 
not a whole lot of space for your feet to go. If you have the older version where it was an actual manual, this is your clutch, you'd have to ride with your foot up here. Also super weird. I'm not a very big and I'm not far off the roof here. So big people have a really hard time getting in and out of this car. Where you can actually access the engine, let me get out so I can show you, is behind the seat, this little silver dial here. Pull that up. And it pops the hatch. So there you can see the vacuum tank I had to put in. I ran all the wiring, tucked and hidden, and the vacuum lines underneath this cover, and all the wiring harness up through here. The vacuum solenoid and everything that controls the valve, so this FI exhaust is down in there. Engine's really clean. Again, more Italian. Folio. It's kind of fun. So far, I've been super reliable. So the engine is a 5.2 liter V10. Being in 2009, this is the partnership with the Volkswagen Group. So it's basically the same chassis as the Audi R8. Same motor, same chassis. I was looking at getting an R8, but I decided this was the better bet for me. It's what I preferred, and I just love the looks and the styling and the aggressiveness of it. Um, eventually we might unwrap it, go back to the black that's underneath the Sonoza Tech Super Gloss Sand, but for now, I'm kind of rocking it, do something else with it, add some flares and pop, make it my own. And uh, let's show you the trunk space, the front here. So to pop that down here, just like most vehicles, nothing too crazy there. Oh, that reverse button. Something else I want to touch on. Not a ton of space in here, but it's enough for, you know, going around town, picking up a few items, but definitely not doing a big grocery shop with it or anything, or uh, traveling too far, more than a couple of small duffel bags. Here, come with your Lamborghini bags, is your tire inflator, patch kit, and here you got your, got your fancy smancy white Lamborghini gloves in here, along with some other small tools and whatnot. Obviously not going to use those, going to keep them in there for the resale value and whatnot. Your battery access is in here. So if you ever need to boost your battery, it's right there in that panel. Also got a 12 volt plug-in in the front here, powering the inflator that's in there or anything else you need. The wipers are ridiculously huge and this side one barely moves. It goes from there to there and that's it where this one does a full pass. Kinda weird. So when you drive this thing, it's all paddle shifters up here, but to put it in reverse, Come to a stop, put it neutral, then you press the reverse button on the left hand side, which is, I find just odd and unnatural feeling compared to other, any other vehicle, but it is what it is. Pop the fuel door is here, just pull that, it just popped up in the mirror there, it is on the passenger side. As for storage, there's really not a whole lot. You got that, that doesn't even fit a phone, and your glove box which again doesn't fit anything really but the paperwork and your insurance registration. Ooh. AC works in this car, blows nice and cold. Headlights are bright as hell, can't complain there. It does have a CD player in behind here. This drops down as a CD or you can put SD cards in there. Um, might look into replacing the head unit but it's not a standard size so it kind of takes some work to, to do. Matching Lamborghini floor mats, a little blue accent, might do something with that color and the car. Cool Gardo emblem here on the side. And it's debadged, has the LP560-4 decals, plates in here. It is 560 horsepower, all wheel drive. Plenty fast, 560 horsepower. Uh, 
am looking into getting a tune and the TCU, so the, the transmission control unit, get that tuned so it shifts better, it'll be quicker, gain some horsepower too with the engine tune. Um, other things to do with this thing, I don't really know. We've already done the exhaust valves, look at the FI exhaust, it is crazy loud. Um, cold start on this thing is insane, you can't even hear me talk, so no point in even doing it, and the car is warm right now, we had it out in town. And I've washed it, so it's still warm. But when it's time to go stealth mode on the keys, I can just press the button that I have from the remote for the FI exhaust here. So I can put it on on, which will make the exhaust super loud, or I want to basically turn the exhaust off so it's quieter. Hit the off button, and it's fairly decent. It has more of a high revving sound to it, even though obviously it's not revving any higher. It's just a higher sound, yet it's way, way quieter. So you can turn that on at night when you gotta try and sneak home or whatever, and you can put it in auto, which is quiet when it's at idle, and then as soon as you get above three or four thousand RPM, it opens the exhaust valves and lets it flow and scream like it wants to. One of these days in the next video, uh, maybe we'll put it up against the C8 and see what's faster from a launch. Uh, this thing does have thrust control mode, being that it's the newer model. You can get thrust control with the LP560-4. Like I said, it's the first year of the partnership of the uh, Volkswagen Group, so they have redid the entire front end. It's a new engine, it's not the five liter like they used to be, it's a 5.2, it's much more reliable. Uh, it doesn't have clutch issues nearly as bad. You don't have to spend 35 grand every 5,000 kilometers or whatever it is with the old five liter that were in these uh, Gallardos 2004 to 2008. 2009 is much better, that's why I went with this one. Plus the other things that have been facelifted on this car, like the headlights are a little nicer, the taillights are nicer, and yeah, front end parts, everything. Everything's just nicer about this car than the older ones. The only downfall to the LP560-4 versus the 04 to 08 cars is you cannot get it in a manual. So we're stuck here still with a paddle shift, however, it's super fun to drive still, so aggressive to shift. So if you guys uh, got any comments, leave them down below. Please like, please subscribe. I'm trying to get enough subscribers to start you know, getting monetized, get this channel off the ground. And once we start getting monetized and creating some you know, content and making money off of that, then I'm hoping to you know, be able to build some sort of burnout box, drift track, something somewhere so that everybody in the local neighborhood can come out and burn some tires off legally and safely and not get in trouble by the police. That's the end goal. Help me get there. Hit that subscribe. And if you got any ideas of things that we should do to this car next, let me know. I'm uh, always open for options. So far we've got the exhaust, wheels, tires. Uh, we're going to go kill these tires off. So stay tuned. We're going to go down to Mexico, of course, to a controlled environment and roast the rest of these tires because when I did get the car from August, they were pretty bald. They looked good on the outside, but the inside tire wear on them was pretty much gone. So once you get underneath it, I was like, ah, it's time for new tires. So we're going to go kill those. And then, uh, yeah, put some new tires on it in another video. And other than that, I don't know what else to do the same way. It's pretty much a fantastic car just the way it is. So let me know if you think we should do anything else. If not, have a good night. See you in the next video.